Well, D.C. public schools have expanded the district's COVID vaccine mandate, making it one of the strictest in the entire country. Students 12 years and older must be vaccinated against the virus to attend school this fall. According to the Washington Post, in total, 85% of D.C. students between 12 and 15 years old have been vaccinated against COVID. However, among black children in this age range, that drops to 60%. As author Jennifer Say pointed out on Twitter, this means 40% of D.C.'s black students 12 and up could be barred from attending school this fall. Oh. Robbie, <laughs> how, how do they keep making the same disgusting mistakes over and over and over again? It's it just makes you furious to read about this, to learn about this. I mean, how many times do we have to go over these statistics that children in this age range are not at serious risk of a very negative COVID outcome. The deaths among this age cohort are, are a fraction, a invisible fraction of the, of the total, um, unless you have a immuno health compromised condition or, or maybe you are severely obese, barring extreme exceptional circumstances, this age range is not at risk. And thus the vaccine should be as a matter of attending public schools, this vaccine should be optional. It should be for families to decide, I think, uh, for, for families to decide with their doctors, their kids, you know, what works best for them. They're not putting other people at risk because we all know, even though the vaccine, you know, does help if you're in an at-risk at category, uh, helps you from having a negative uh, trip to the hospital or death, it is not doing there, it's doing very little to, to stem the spread of COVID. I mean, we've all, we're all gonna get to the point where we're all vaccinated, we've all had it multiple times. It's just not, it's not affecting transmission uh, anymore the way it was you know, early on. Maybe you could, you could have made a case for the original strain uh, that it, it was doing something, but by the time Delta and then Omicron rolled around, it's just not, it's, it's, it's really protective for you if you're at risk of hospitalization or death. That's what the vaccine does for you. It's an individual choice. So to, to the fact that they would require it and that look at look at the population, you're going to hurt black kids in D.C. schools who are, you know, obviously we all know disproportionately likely to come from poverty or, or homes that have challenges, single parent homes, people who have already fallen behind over two years of the pandemic from remote learning, people who are at risk of getting involved in sketchy situations or violence. And you are, this is the literally the worst thing you could do. This is a, this is a, this is a project to have more crime, uh, worse reading and math achievements. It's just terrible. It's so terrible. I just, I, how dare they do this? How dare they bar up to 40% of black children from school? And where is the outrage? And I totally agree with you. 84% of juvenile offenders are functionally illiterate, 84%. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a direct line between being able to, learning how to read on time, you know, in an age appropriate way and being able to stay out of the school to prison pipeline. I mean, those things, that that, 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 that causation is like totally established. It is so appalling. How dare they bar children from mandated reporters of abuse? How dare they bar black children from maybe the only nutritious meals that they're going to get during the day. It is absolutely disgusting. And they keep making the same mistake over and over and over again. It's like there's nobody looking out for these kids. They have some sort of weird obsession with trying to force parents to do things that they don't think are right. And like, they're not gonna do that, you know? They're not gonna do that. And so all you're doing is penalizing children for not getting a vaccine that like you said, Robbie, should be a totally individual decision. Yeah, and it's so clear if you look at uh, DC, I'm sure this is true in many other cities, but it's, yeah, I pay particularly close attention to it because I live in DC. You see that the, the rise in crime, the carjackings or some dog nappings, stabbing, shootings, et cetera, the, the kind of violence that we're seeing uh, happen, it, it, much of it, it is substantially, a good amount of it is being committed by teens who are on the margins of society, who fell into bad behavior, into the wrong crowd, who are delinquents who have nowhere else to be. If you have structure for them, if you have extracurricular activities, school, support groups, 
those kinds of things, you keep more of those kids because it's it's very it's not a lot of people. The the prob the number of problem people we have out there is small. But if you keep more of them, you know, in the net, you capture them, you have something for them to do, something healthy and social, you prevent them from, you know, falling, from crossing the line where they've fallen into a territory where they're, you know, very likely to be out sometime they're not supposed to be or involved in, in you know, very informal crime taking place. You don't have that happen if you have structures for them, school being by far the most important structure you could possibly have. We need to socialize young people, especially if they're at at-risk environments where they're not getting good guidance at home or they don't have people to be good role models for them, school helps keep them, keep them from going off and doing something bad. So to, it's the stupid, it's the easiest thing, it's this, it's a day, it fills a daycare role in, in some, uh, some circumstances, teaches good behavior. And to just close that off to the very, a, a group of people who are disproportionately likely to be, to be at risk if they don't have it. There's, it, you're, it's bad for them. It's bad for the entire city. It's just bad on all fronts. And it is, there is no rational public health purpose for it. We're not, this isn't a trade-off in values. We're not saying, well, this will be bad for their outcomes and will make crime worse, but we're weighing that against the public health need. There is no legitimate public health rationale for this. So what, Robbie, what is your explanation for why they're doing it? Like, I'm really, I'm just speechless. I don't have an, I can't steal, man. I mean, I got nothing. Yeah. Like, why would they be doing this? The only ones doing it. Nobody else is falling for this nonsense. Like, what's the why here? As far as I can tell, this city is, I mean, like many other cities, but D.C. in particular is COVID nuts. Um, the 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 officials, the government officials, uh, the I mean, it's, it's teachers unions, as you know, have been a very, uh, very powerful lobby for keeping schools closed as long as possible and having as many requirements for as long as possible, including vaccine requirements. Uh, there was, you know, a lot of fear that, oh, you know, what teachers are older and some of them are in more at risk categories. So you're, you're putting their lives at risk if, you know, you're exposing them to the virus if kids come in they're not vaccinated but again that thinking you could you could have made that argument a year ago i i would have disagreed with that judgment then but you just can't that argument has yeah. is, has to come up against the reality that unvaccinated kids are not are not more likely to be de disease vectors for you your health is your business and if you're at risk or you're worried there are so many steps you can do to protect yourself and it's not really on other people to do that at this point um, and, and I don't know why that message has not, that message has taken hold in a lot of places, but the DC public school system is just so, I mean, so many public school systems in cities are not serving kids well, and, and that was true even before the pandemic, but just the wholesale abdication of the idea that it's even their job to, to do so is, it's really, it's really sad and very frustrating. It's an absolute scandal. Yeah. All right, well, we'll be following that more closely, of course, and we'll be back with more Rising right after this.